The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating where we get to the bottom of people's behaviors, why they do the things they do, why they say the things that they say, and why do we need to do taxes is my question for this week. (laughs) That has so much to do with dating. (laughs) It took me all weekend to do my taxes. Why? They change the tax laws every year. And I'm just more confused every year. You always wait to the last minute. I'm always baffled by it. My mom's an accountant and wants it done like ASAP. So (laughs) I'm actually more proud that I did it the night before it was due. To me, that was early. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to you, that's Nothing like minute. that procrastination. But for anyone new, this is a this is a dating podcast, not a tax podcast. It could be a tax podcast. <laughs> hey, dating taxes all goes hand in hey, hand. Hey, we were having this whole conversation about like if you get married in the state mm. of California, you actually get less tax breaks, which yes. is so counterintuitive to what I would have thought. I mean, some of it depends on your income brackets, of course, but like there are a lot of my friends that are married by saying but not legally married yes i have a lot of friends like that too because he used to hear and i'm sure you've heard this too julie like oh you get married and you get tax breaks it's good yeah for taxes. exactly but it's a myth apparently yeah and you don't get like tax breaks for homes anymore like there's so much bullshit out there no need to get married no need to have a home just be yeah. homeless and single exactly exactly <laughs> you're coming out of head on taxes lesson learned <laughs> But you, Miss Julie, had quite an eventful weekend. I want to hear yes, all I about did. it. She, did, she didn't tell me anything before we recorded. She said she was willing to talk about her. We can get away. So t- well, tell, tell us. I want to start before that, that we had a live stream last week. For anyone that's in our public Love in the Time of Corona group, we do a community live stream every month. And we had a special guest. We'll give a shout out to Dawn. She was our member of the month for May. So go Dawn. And... Um, um, somehow the live stream turned to my personal life, which was not Ryan part of Jeffrey. the agenda. I credit to Ryan. I mean, I think I've like alluded on some past episodes that I have been seeing someone, but Ryan Jeffrey specifically asked, and I just like, I remember when he called it out, like you always like, there's a question directed to you. And I was like, I know exactly what this is going to be. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Do you feel like J-Lo? It's like every time J-Lo changes her relationship status, everyone goes crazy and starts talking about it. Like, oh my God, did you hear J-Lo? J-Lo's dating Ben Affleck again. I I didn't think about that until right now. So no, I do not feel like (laughs) J-Lo. Well, you should. It's definitely the same exact situation, exact obviously. Same. Same obviously. Scale. Exact same situation. But yes, I mean, I guess I did share that I have been seeing someone. I have a new boyfriend, which is very exciting. And you know, like when things click, they click. It was like one of those moments that like we've only it's only been a month, so it hasn't a little over a month at this point. So it hasn't been super long. But you know, we saw each other a lot. He was very proactive. Like we'd go on a date, he'd ask for the next, like a couple days later. We saw each other a lot in a short period of time and just, you know, really enjoyed being together, which it was a reminder to me that like, sometimes we make dating more complex than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Like when someone's into you, they're ready for a relationship. They just want to see you. And it like doesn't need to be so many like games. And we don't need to be chasing these people that just don't want the same as us, right? Whether they aren't in the same place in their lives, or they don't view us in that way. Like, what is the point at the end of the day? I know easier said than done. I've definitely been in things that are much more difficult. But it is a reminder to me, like how easy it should feel, especially at this stage of the game. It is a it's an interesting dichotomy. On one hand, it should be easy, it should feel easy. On the the other hand, it's the effort that people put into the dates that mm-hmm. really show their interest. 
So I remember when you two first started dating, you were saying, this one just feels different because mm-hmm. he's putting in a lot of effort. He's very intentional. After your first date, he asked about the second date. After the second date, he wants to see you again pretty soon after. It's the effort that someone puts in. And I, we forget that sometimes it's not about winning someone over. It's to see if they want to put in the effort, and if you want to put in the effort. I'm glad you said that because I think easy doesn't mean not effort. Right. Like, it's been easy in the sense that, like, I never questioned the intention. I never wondered, like, does he like me? Like, when are we going to see each other next? Like, that was all laid out very transparently. Mm -hmm. And, like, effort-wise, like, I think, like, I told him, like, kind of, like, when I was, like, oh, I'm into this, was, like, he made me, like, a full-on picnic, like, in the park. Like, he, like, was, like, what sandwiches do you want? I was thinking about ordering from this place. Like, set me the menu the night before. And, you know, he just came super prepared with everything everything and I had been on so many dates park dates prior and I'm like putting it in quotations because Mm -hmm. the guy just like rolled up with like nothing you know (laughs) like I was the one that had to be like should I bring a bottle of wine and it was like so nice and refreshing for someone just to own it and I like almost wanted to be like oh should I do this this I'm like I'm just gonna like let him do it because he's like wants to do it right (laughs) yeah that was really impressive so he completely checked off the double e's the effort and the easiness (laughs) the double e's Maybe that's like the new sign when you've like met someone. Oh, yeah, you got to the double E's. Yes, we <laughs> yep, did. Exactly. The double E's. But yeah, it just I think like sometimes easy, like you think like, oh, it's so it's too easy. It's not interesting. It doesn't need to be no. that either. It's like sometimes you just don't want that pit in your stomach when you're like unsure if they're gonna text you back. Like who wants that at the end of the day? Imagine that. <laughs> so then this was a big getaway weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I had this trip planned to Sonoma with three other girlfriends of mine and their significant others and babies in some cases. And they're, I mean, I was six wheeling it, but I, honestly, I didn't seventh even wheel? care. Seventh, seventh wheeling wheel? it. Yeah, I was okay. seventh wheel. No, oh, was, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd be the seventh wheel. <laughs> I'm like, am I the sixth wheel or the seventh wheel? I don't know. Well, maybe to some of them, you're the sixth wheel and their partner is the seventh wheel. (laughs) But we just won't Who even knows anymore? Yeah. But I mean, they're all my friends. So I honestly, I didn't really care. And I honestly, when we booked this trip, I wasn't expecting to have someone to invite to it because it wasn't like that. Like it was probably like a month and a half ago ish, Mm -hmm. like maybe two months ago. And um, yeah, like I was like, should I invite him? Should I? Because we've been spending all this time together. And I'm like, I. I want him to come and like I would like to introduce him to my friends but I was like is it too soon in the sense that like would it be better for us to do a trip first Mm -hmm. you know but I was like we were out one night and I just like it felt right and I asked him and he was super excited about it so he came on the trip with me and it was super fun I'm really glad I'm really glad that I invited him like I I think that it was the right choice and like I'm really happy with the way it turned out like this group of friends like they're pretty easygoing and like they're significant others are pretty welcoming and easy to hang out with. So I wasn't like super concerned. But it also was like a lot of new people <laughs> to meet at once. And you know, I he definitely like got along great with everyone. It was really good to see. And you know, you even asked me if there were babies there. And I'm like, yeah, I really just threw him in deep. But <laughs> uh, it was so cute, though. One of my friend's daughter, she's like three. And she was like going around picking everyone flowers and like bringing them over like when we were at dinner. Adorable. And she like brought one to him and everyone's like, you made it you're in (laughs) you got that flower (laughs) you got got that final rose yeah we're like you're you've been picked for the bachelor (laughs) the bachelorette you've made your cut (laughs) but you know it's kind of like what why even wait right like you're he's going to meet your friends eventually this was a great opportunity to do so and it shows that you don't take this lightly you weren't just going to invite anybody on this trip so it meant a lot for you to even ask him to go totally totally Yeah, so I'm glad you guys had a good time. No, it was great. You know, I mean, like, just being in Sonoma right now with, like, the sunny weather. He has a Jeep, so we rode up the Jeep, and everyone at the house was super excited about the Jeep. Because it had, like, the roof down. Uh, One of my friends was like, this is fulfilling my high school fantasy right now, (laughs) being in the Jeep. (laughs) But, yeah, we hit up a lot of wineries, breweries. I was telling UA, I'm like, I just feel, like, so tired right now. We're, like, recording this a little late. But I'm like, I think, like, the four days of drinking and eating just caught up to me. Yes. It was super fun. It was super fun. 
Good well for needed. you. <laughs> what, what was the situation like up in Sonoma now with the new mask laws? I feel like some people are, all, are like, okay, I'm good to take it off. Some people are like, oh, hell no, I'm keeping this on as long as I can. Um, It was like mixed. I mean, there were okay. definitely like people, like in all the wineries, they were totally wearing them and stuff. But I actually lost my mask at one point. And Ooh. we went to like a brewery and we went to a cider place first because there was like a line. And I went to go to the brewery and I'm like, shit, I don't have my mask. And I only had one on me. And I'm like, are they gonna like let me in? Because it was like indoors and stuff. And I just like walked through and like no one even like batted an eye. Really? (laughs) Yeah. But then um, on the way out, like, um, like the guys went into the gift shop and he bought me a mask from the place, which was really cute. We need a code name. We can't just call him the guy. (laughs) We need a code name. I know we're not ready to reveal his actual name, but like, what's a good code name? I could just say my boyfriend that's a good way to say it your bf yes <laughs> i'm not gonna give him a fake name on the podcast Fine. And you, i feel like you don't really reference your boyfriend's name either well because his name is so unique <laughs> that's <laughs> true that is very true that is be true. very easy to find <laughs> that is true actually his would not be no. very easy no and he's like is not a social media person so it would be very difficult to find your but code name for anyways. him would be more <laughs> unique than his actual name <laughs> probably <laughs> probably but yeah no it was a great weekend um nothing but good stuff from it so i'm so happy it was like look at julie she's <laughs> she's off the grid this weekend i was like hello are you there she, you know, hey, getting I drunk totally- I totally texted with you, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Once. You know, okay, for anybody who's friends with Julie, you know she loves to text. This girl is a texting queen. And when I didn't hear from her for, I, I don't know, at least 12 hours, like, is she okay? I'm sure she's having a good time, like, but I just want to make alive? sure. Because <laughs> you know you it's true. Like, Send help. Is she okay? <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard a peep from her over text. No, she's fine. She's just in a relationship now, so. Anyways. Uh, Anyways. It's a big week for us, though. It is. And we did meet on Hinge. I'm going to throw that oh, out. Because right, that actually right. has a lot to do with this coming episode, this coming sounding board event week. Like, we have a lot tied with dating apps. But you all know that I used to really be anti-dating apps. Like, I never thought I would meet people off dating apps. I had the experience that many of the people in our group had. Like, I every time I see one of those posts, I'm just like, ah, oh, like, you know, stick with it. Like, don't yeah. give up. Because, like, I definitely would was in this time period that I definitely serial dated a lot on dating apps and many of them didn't go anywhere. Like I'd have like a couple of dates, they'd ghost, they'd fall off, they wouldn't want to be in a relationship, whatever it was. And same for me, like I would lose interest or whatever. I definitely remember like tindering while in the bathroom on a date, you know, like I was definitely (laughs) guilty also. (laughs) But I really lost hope in dating apps. And then like I met my ex, the one that um, my British ex that left and again mm-hmm. the only reason we broke up had nothing to do with it being a bad relationship like he had to leave the country because he lost a visa and now I met this boyfriend from a hinge so it's like I, I just think it's a great way to meet people that you would never come in contact with and I don't necessarily like it doesn't need to be your only way to meet people but like why rule out this way that's like so mainstream right now yeah I mean just every time we talk about technology we can either choose to complain about it or we can figure out ways for it to work to our benefit. And dating apps were created to work to our benefit, not to make our lives worse. So with that intention behind it, I think this is why this is a great episode, because we interview the co-founder of Coffee Meets Bagel, uh, Dawoon, because she will shed some light around how she's built an entire company about finding love for Mm -hmm. you. It's not, they did not build with the intention of let's make people's lives insane and crazy. (laughs) You know, let's make everyone mad. That's not what they're trying to do all these dating apps are trying to make the app sticky so that you 
have a great experience and potentially meet someone special. Mm -hmm. I remember we put up a post a while back of like, if you could ask a dating app founder anything, what would you want? And we got a shit ton of answers back. So we did our very best to hit the majority of them. And, you know, there's some topics that were like, this probably warrants like a whole discussion on its own. So we left some off. But I think this episode is pretty jam packed with a lot of the stuff that you all wanted to know. And that kind of is the inner workings of the algorithms to like how to use like success stories that they've heard and like how to use these in your favor. And the ultimate question is how do I best use the apps? People always ask about the algorithm. How does it give Mm -hmm. you the matches that it gives you? So if you know the inner workings of an app, then you can have it work for you. Yeah. And this is definitely the week of the data gaps because we have our sounding board event this Thursday. So there's still some spaces left. We try to keep these relatively small so they can be very intimate environments that are, you know, like sometimes it can get personal when you're talking about your data gap. But we want to make it a really comfortable and encouraging environment, which we feel they are. So for the sounding board event this Thursday, we have Marie and Nitya who are going to be telling us exactly how to master your dating profile. Uh, Marie is a dating coach. She's been active in our Love in the Time of Corona group for a while now. We've had the pleasure of referring a bunch of people over to her. So that's been great to see people actually working with her and getting a lot of great results. And then she recommended Nitya, who she's worked with, to actually help as a photographer to like get them those photos because we all know how important photos are in your dating profile. About packaging. How do you package yourself in in a way that's authentic, but also attracts the audience you're trying to get all it takes Mm -hmm. is one you're just trying to get that one match or i don't know if you're a poly maybe multiple (laughs) Um, so i I should just scratch that you're just trying to attract the right people for you no matter how many you're looking for Exactly. And even for people that are in relationships, I think getting some tips on photography will be great. I think I might have driven my new boyfriend a little crazy with all the selfies that looked like utter shit. So I had to retake them. Personally looking forward to having this help that I don't need to make someone take a bunch of photos. I could just get it right on the first (laughs) or second try. Or you train him (laughs) to be the best photographer there is. You should bring him to the event on Thursday. But again, that is happening this Thursday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. For all the information and how you can uh, join the sounding board, again, it's just datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. And this is all related to our question our, from our new segment on dating advice from some of the questions from you all who've sent in questions uh, that we've seen a lot of the same questions around dating apps and and I consolidated them into this one question, <laughs> which is, what is the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to their dating apps? We hear Woo. this question a lot. And I bet we're going to get this question again on Thursday. Uh, I think there are a lot of mistakes that people can make, but but none of them are really detrimental. I do mm-hmm. think there is one big mistake that people make just from picking their photos, which is picking photos that don't show their eyes. People mm-hmm. tend to t- take photos or show photos of them in sunglasses, of them looking down, looking up, looking away. But to fully grasp someone's vibe through picture, we need to see your eyes. And that should be your profile photo. Your other photos can have whatever. You can look in whichever direction, wear whatever funky glasses you want to. But for that initial photo to grab someone's attention, it's really good to see your eyes. Yeah, I know this is the one, but I think smiling is up there also when it comes to photos. Like if someone doesn't look like a happy person that I'm going to enjoy being around, like if they're kind of like too cool for school type of look, like I'll pass over that. But I would say outside of photos, if we're going to go a little more Mm -hmm. obscure on like the one thing with these dating apps that have verification, I think it is a mistake not to do it. Mm. I've heard from men specifically that there's a lot of scammers on dating apps and they do look for this, the the blue check mark. You do not have to be Instagram cool to get the check mark. Like you don't have to be VIP. All you need to do is like take a photo of yourself live so they can verify that you're the same person. One of those things that's a tool that's there. And I think it's easy to skip over because you're like, why do I need to do this? But I have heard from a lot 
of different people that they do look for it. And they want to make sure that whoever they're talking to is a legit human being and not someone like, you know, scamming them for cash. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you brought this up. What is this show called? There's a show called... uh... Oh, something about hustling or um, how to be. I I don't I forget. It's a documentary series on Netflix and each episode features a scammer and what they do. And one of them was this this uh, rapper who built his entire career on teaching people how to scam others. And the biggest. Was it Ja Rule? No. (laughs) (laughs) Fire. Fire festival. I feel like everything he's associated with is a scam. This is coming from someone that used to love Ja Rule. that's so true. Oh, I'm so, I was just listening to his old songs the other day. It was so good. <laughs> but this scam, uh, so this rapper does this all the time. He calls it free money. It's an Instagram scam where he steals photos from hot girls' profiles, creates a new account, buys followers, builds up the followers, and starts following every guy. Okay, so then you just have a bunch of guys who are going to follow you back. And then he starts DMing them and starts flirting with them, have conversations with them to the point where he offers to want to fly out to meet them or want gifts. And the guys would offer to pay for his, I mean, quote, her shit. And then as soon as they wire over the money or PayPal the money, he blocks their account and they can never find Fuck. this person again. Yes. And no identities revealed, no information is really exchanged. So yes, I agree. If you can verify your your profile on the dating apps, it is a huge help. Yeah. I mean, in our Facebook group alone, I've seen a lot of people of like, you know, all sexualities, all genders, like posting about scammers on dating apps. We actually didn't go super deep on this topic in this episode because I actually think it warrants an entire episode on its own because it's a super interesting topic. But I think like if you're a normal person on the data gap looking for love, don't let someone think you're a scammer, right? Like yeah. use the tools that you have. Like I remember someone asked me once like if I was a bot or a real person <laughs> and I was like, well, I'll take it as a compliment that you think that I'm like a fake person, but I'm also like, did this person just get like really screwed over a lot, you know? Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. I've definitely talked to plenty of bots on dating apps, believe it or not. Because you can t- you can kind of tell. <laughs> oh yeah, there's there's a few specifically that when you like first sign on, you get a lot of really hot people. That's oh yeah, suspect. yeah, and then you talk to them and they're soulless. Like there's absolutely no conversation. Or they never match with you. Or they never match. Yeah. But yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Clickbait. That's what that is. Cool. Um, All right. Hope that answers the question. The biggest mistake you can make on dating apps. Cool. So quick announcements really fast, and then we'll get into our sponsors. So join Love in the Time of Corona. As always, this is the public group. Just to kind of like, you know, I feel like there's a little housekeeping. There is the private group, the sounding board. That's where the events happen. That's where the virtual happy hours happen. That's where the podcast discussion groups Basically, anything that isn't just written text is in the sounding board. But that is our premium group. So to sign up for that, you can join at any of the three levels, datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. But if you just want to be in the public group, that's love in the time of Corona. Yeah, I've got to keep saying this because we get a lot of requests that I know it's super confusing that we have two groups, but that's just the line in the sand of what the difference is. And yeah, we hope that you'll join both groups, obviously, but at least one of them, depending depending on what your needs are. Yes. Cool. Cool. So let's get into our sponsors. This episode is made possible by pros. There's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to shampoo and conditioner. We need products that are suited for our unique needs and don't leave us disappointed. Case in point, my hair turned super frizzy and wavy in my 20s, and none of my old hair care products were effective anymore. So now, thanks to my personalized pros shampoo and conditioner and even pre-shampoo mask, I've fallen in love with my hair again. Pros creates customized hair care products for people, not hair types. You'll never have to compromise on healthy hair goals because every product's formula is made with you in mind. Their online quiz dives into every conceivable factor that affects your hair health, such as your family history, diet, and even zip code. Yeah, since moving to LA, the pollution has totally affected the quality of my hair. So with over 50 billion formula combinations, Pros can give you a unique blend of ingredients that caters to your every strand and follicle. Pros is a healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair quiz and get 50 
15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash datable. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E for your free in-depth hair quiz and 15% off. This episode is brought to you by Z-Man Games, an array of fun games for adults, one of which is called Love Letter. Now, in this card game, your goal is to win the heart of the noble princess who is looking for an ideal partner and confidant to help with her royal duties when she one day assumes the throne. Your goal is to enlist the characters in the castle to deliver your love letter while keeping other players' letters away. It's trickier than it sounds. Powerful cards lead to early gains but make you a target and rely on weaker cards for too long and your letter may be tossed in the fire. I find it to be a fun and nice 20 minute mental break during the day. This two to six player card game fits in your pocket so you can take it with you anywhere. Love Letter is appropriate for ages 10 and up and is available for $11.99 through Z-Man Games. You can find it at Target, your local game store, or directly through Z-Man's web store. Awesome. So shall we hear it from Da Wound? Da Wound. So we always want to know what are the inner workings of a dating app? We've read the articles, we've heard rumors, but now we're going to get to the bottom of exactly what happens behind a dating app by founder herself. Her name is Dawoon. She's founder of Coffee Meets Bagel. She currently lives in Oahu. What a hard life right? Like, it must be <laughs> so hard to be so there. So jealous. So <laughs> jealous. Out on the beach. <laughs> yeah, it must be really, really hard right now. Uh, originally from Korea, she's 37 years old, and she is married. Hi, Dawoon. How are you? Hi, you and Julie. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be here. Thank you for taking a break from your beachy vibes in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, with I us. gotta get back, so let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I have 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's make this speedy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think you set this up perfectly. We asked our audience about just like what they would ask a dating founder if they had the opportunity, given that we knew we'd be talking to you. And the questions like piled in. So we're obviously going to do it abbreviated mm-hmm. so we can go deep on them. But people have a lot of questions about what goes down in a dating app. Well, this question I'm sure you've gotten a million times, but we're going to ask you again, because we want to hear from you and have it on record, which is what inspired you to create Coffee Meets Bagel in the first place? Yeah, you know, um, this was, wow, like now eight years ago, and it feels like yesterday. But, um, you know, at the time, my two sisters and I, they're my co-founders, and we were looking for ideas to work on. So we've always wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, because our parents are entrepreneurs. Actually, like played with a bunch of different things like travel, food and all that stuff. And just kept coming back to dating because maybe it was a function of us being in our late 20s. Always came came up among our <laughs> friends, single friends as a problem, like both men and women. And when we started looking into it, it we thought it was really interesting. There was no shortage of products out there that, um, you know, this has always been a competitive space. But what we actually really saw that was lacking is that this focus on quality aspect versus quantity, most of the dating services at the time and still to today is really focused on like, okay, let's just get as many people as possible in front of you for you to either swipe or browse or whatever. You know, that model, while I think can be entertaining, if you're somebody looking for a really quality quality connection, you know, looking for for long-term relationship. I personally don't think that lends itself to a great outcome. Is that impossible? Of course it is possible, but, you know, being able to focus on fewer, but more relevant matches for you so that you can actually go deeper. Each connection that you formulate, I believe is is a faster way to get to the type of genuine long-term connection that you're looking for, if, if that's what you're looking for. And, you know, there has been a lot of studies that kind of back this up too, right? Like there's a really famous study that was done by a professor at Harvard. It's called the jam study where they actually had different booths with you know one booth with like 25 jams that people could try Mm. versus another booth with like six jams Mm -hmm. that people could try and there were a lot more people gathered in the 25 jam like (laughs) booth Mm -hmm. Um, but when it came to purchase decisions people who actually tasted jams at the 25 like jam booth were only 10 percent likely to make a purchase versus the other one the six six jam booth because it's just cognitively so too overwhelming 
timing to be able to make a decision as to like what I actually want to commit of all these all these gems that I tried. And it's the same concept with the different things, including dating. There's so many choices. It becomes really overwhelming and very easy to be like, you know what? I, I just don't want to deal with it. I can't deal with this. Right. And right. Um, I think that psychology is kind of the crux of why it feels like online dating feels like, you know, exhausting. And, you know, you spend a lot of time, but like concrete things just don't you know, nothing, people say nothing ever come out of it. Well, because people are having a hard time making decisions as to like who they actually want to spend time with. And so, um, you know, given kind of all the observing all that dynamic, you know, we decided to create Coffee Meets Bagel, which is, hey, like anti-swiping, let's really focus on quality. Let's make sure that we actually focus on serving people, not all singles, but people who are focused on long-term relationship, because it's also frustrating to come to a dating app and then like end up being matched with people who are not looking for the same thing. Right. Um, and so really specialize in that that was kind of the birth of Coffee Meets Bagel. So could you take us back to where you were at this point? You said that you were, you and your sisters were all single, looking for, you know, to have relationships. Were you using other dating apps before you created Coffee Meets Bagel? When you actually created Coffee Meets Bagel, did you use your own app? Like, take us through (laughs) your own app experience a bit. Yeah, well, so correction, we were not all singles. Like, a lot of, we were in our late 20s and a lot of our friends were single, so the, the this topic came up but we the three of us we were not all singles only one of us was okay. actually uh one of us uh was almost like engaged oh. and then i was also in a relationship and so when I started, I was in a relationship, but as a result of uh, moving to New York City to start Coffee Meets Bagel, I was actually in Hong Kong at the time, like when, when I first started mm-hmm. working on Coffee Meets Bagel. But because Coffee Meets Bagel was taking off, I decided to move to New York um, to be physically more cl- close to my co-founders, my sisters, and be able to like operate from there. And I told my ex-boyfriend at the time, like, hey, you know, I think our relationship is super strong. So I don't think long-term relationship is long distance relationship is is going to be a problem for us um was totally wrong about that (laughs) and so so about like six months after uh we i moved we ended up breaking up Mm. um and so then i started using coffee meets bagel myself i I took a break like for a little bit because i i just couldn't it was it was a very devastating one-sided breakup like i Mm. thought we were totally doing well very very good lesson on communication or you know, rather lack of communication. And so then I started using Coffee Meets Bagel myself. So take us through that. Tell us your experience using your own app. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was really, really fun. Like, you know, sometimes I get questions like, because now now I'm married, mm-hmm. like, is it harder to actually uh, work on Coffee Meets Bagel? I think yes and no. Like when I was using the app myself, um, and I was on a bunch of different apps also. For like, research, of course. It, <laughs> research. I did meet up with a couple of people as well. Uh, but like, I'm seriously not saying this because uh, oh, I'm a Coffee Meets Bagel founder, but I did actually have a, have the best results uh, with Coffee Meets Bagel. Mm-hmm. Only probably because I didn't spend a ton of time on dating apps in general, like because I was working a lot. Just the way we are designed, like we, we only give you curated, like limited number of matches, right? And so that was very digestible for me. And um, for the time that I was actually putting in, like the R I was best with Coffee Meets Bagel. And so, yeah, I was using a ton of dating apps. I mean, Coffee Meets Bagel on a, almost on a daily basis and meeting people. And it was it's really easy to empathize with the users when I'm actually the user myself, right? For sure. Uh, whereas, yeah, whereas now I'm married, so I, I'm not using the app for real. Um, and so I need to actually put in extra effort to be able to empathize. It doesn't come as naturally to me. I actually use the, uh, Coffee Meets Bagel as one of my friends. Mm. And so I log in through one of my friend who's single and she has a hard time kind of motivating herself to use dating apps anyway and so I am logged in as her and then I kind of see her matches and I kind of see like what what she's her experience is like as a way for me to replicate empathy. Are you writing messages for her as well? Sometimes I do that I guess this isn't like totally kosher (laughs) sometimes I do that Um, especially like the very beginning part like hi like you know those those small talk and then I kind of like ping ping my friend hey like now I think you should take over (laughs) Did you meet your husband on a dating app? Or like, could you walk us through that? Did you have relationships from dating apps? So in the, I don't know, five years or so that I actually used Coffee Meets Bagel until like I met my current husband, I met two of my ex-boyfriends on Coffee Meets Bagel. You know, each relationship lasted for about two years. It was a great like long-term relationship. Uh, But my husband, I didn't meet on Coffee Meets Bagel. I actually met him through like just friends. 
Got it. So I could hear people wondering, like, okay, like, obviously, you had success in meeting relationships, but you didn't meet your husband on a dating app. Do mm-hmm. you think like, you know, dating help apps helped you indirectly with that relationship? Like, is there anything that you would like credit dating apps for that? Yeah, you know, I think it's not necessarily dating apps per se. But well, I guess maybe it is a dating app. I think the reason why my my relationship right now I am really really happy with and it's one of those things where I can confidently say <laughs> like this is like the dream relationship that I could ever imagine and I don't think actually a lot of people could say that um you know based on my experience you know a lot of us are okay with mediocre relationship and I think the reason why I was able, I'm able to create this current relationship is because of all the dating experiences that I've had including the people that I met at Coffee Meets Bagel and also like I would have never been able to go on like I literally went on like hundreds of like first dates right through Coffee Meets Bagel and mm. um you know each connection I learned something I learned something about how to build intimate connection I learned something about leaning into hard conversation I learned I mean I, I learned so many things and I that definitely would not have been possible with the time that I was dedicating to dating with everything else going on if it wasn't something as convenient as a dating app. And so I guess indirectly it did actually contribute because it gave me so much experiences to learn from, which ultimately contributed to my ability to create this uh, current relationship that I have. And, you know, like the the two relationships that I had was also really great, but also, you know, there were a lot of painful moments as well, like any other relationship that comes to an end eventually. The last relationship before my current husband that led me to believe and led me to invest the time to learn the science of dating and relationship. Like before that relationship, I was all about, even though, you know, as a, as a dating app founder, I was all about, it's all, you know, it's about waiting and meeting, meeting the right person. Mm-hmm. Like the right person will show up and then it's like, bam, done. <laughs> that was kind of my m- mindset. And mm-hmm. then after that relationship, I was like, well, that's actually not true. Of course, you have to meet somebody who's a good fit, but you both actually have to work on so much in order for you to actually get to the, the end goal, which is the long term, you know, like a really happy, fulfilling way that that's not going to just show up just because you met somebody. And um, I spent a ton of time. That was when I, you know, I became single again at 34. And after going through like, oh, my God, I'm never going to find somebody. I'm going to be single forever. <laughs> I think we all have like, that you know freak what? out moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you yeah. overcome right? it. And that's when you meet someone. <laughs> exactly. Right. Totally. Yeah. But I, but I was like, you know what? Like, I don't think I'm doing this right. It's not just about meeting a lot of people and meeting, you know, like waiting for the right person to show up. Like, I really actually have to get down, understand the science of uh, relationship and what actually makes love work. Because there has to be, you know, this has to be something that's been studied. And so I, I started reading so many materials. I, I started with Sue Johnson. Um mm-hmm. Learned about attachment theory, Bobby's attachment theory for the first time. I thought it was really eye opening and like just kind of went down the rabbit hole of like, I was a psychology major also. So I love also reading like original research paper. Eventually that impacted also how I ran Coffee Meets Bagel, right? It's not just about our algorithm and curating, like, you know, surfacing the quality people, but it's also like, how do we actually make it easy for people to have the right conversation? How do we actually help them navigate dating better? Which is why I launched the podcast. So, okay. So long, very, very long winded answer. Um, uh, to your original question, which actually now I'm forgetting even <laughs> what it was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, helped me tremendously with, you know, my dating app experience, you know, contributed a lot to my current current relationship, as well as like destiny of Coffee Meets Bagel itself, like uh, how we, we started thinking about, hey, if you're really serious about making long-term relationship work for people, we need to do something more than just relying on our algorithm to surface the right people. And that's something I really appreciate about Coffee Meets Bagel. It's that you all have presented your brand as a tool for people to connect better and figure out what they want in a relationship. And just a little backstory that was like, what, six, seven years ago when I used to Mm do blog entries for you guys Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, (laughs) back in the day when I was still doing dating coaching. And I remember being approached by your team and just saying like, we want to offer more tools for our users on how to date better and how to have the app work for them as opposed to like this end all be all destination, you're going to find the love of your life. And I think you make a really 
great point is that it is one of the many ways you can meet people, but it is a great resource for you to practice relating skills and mm-hmm. set you up for success for a relationship that maybe you don't meet on an app, but you've gotten all the tools from the app. Yeah, exactly. And then now that we're seeing the end of COVID, hopefully, end of everyone's coming out, you know, getting vaccinated and everything. And for the last year, app activity has been really hot. Could you take us through what are the trends that you were seeing during COVID? And then maybe we can work on some like prediction or as people are coming (laughs) out of COVID, what are the new trends we'll be seeing? Right, right. You know, one of the biggest uh, changes that I've noticed about daters and how COVID is changing dating is the rise of video, video dating. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is very obvious, but like, I don't know if you guys know this, but we try like seeing be tried uh introducing video oh, right. dating yes like yes. a few years ago yeah we talked because, about it too uh, on our podcast it, it, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay okay yeah because we, we we were like you know what like again you know focusing on people who are looking for long-term relationship like trying to make genuine connection profile is really really difficult to convey who what your true self is so why not just like have video feature that you could use to provide snippet be, like Three seconds of video is tells you a hundred times more things about like your vibe and stuff like that than like reading the photos and the profiles, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't work. And you know, it could have been the way we executed it, but like it was really difficult to get people try like video content. It was like too scary, too awkward. It wasn't just you guys. There were other apps that tried to. It just I don't (laughs) think people were ready for video. People People were not ready for video. (laughs) Right. And then when we, you know, we started serving our users right when COVID started to uh, take hold in in the US, which was March 2020, we immediately started surveying our users like, hey, what are you feeling? What are you going through? And there were a bunch of different questions. And one of the questions that we included was, have you tried using video as a video dating? And only 9% at the time in March said, Mm -hmm. yes, I've ever tried. Mm -hmm. By December, that number had gone up to 44%. Oh my gosh. And so, (laughs) right. Yeah. So there was a five times increase in the number of people who actually have tried dating, uh, video dating. And and, um, you know, most people who actually tried it, I think like about 80% of people said, I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, what's interesting, and this goes to prediction, we also asked, hey, are you enjoying it to the point where you think you'll actually continue to do video date before at least meeting up with the person? Even even after COVID is over, like you feel completely safe meeting up whenever that is. All throughout the summer, the answer was very high, like 70, 80 percent of the people saying like, yeah, I'm going to continue doing video dating because it's like so easy and whatever else. But the most recent survey we did, which is in March, that number had fallen below 50 yeah. percent. And I think it's because like people are just super Zoom fatigued. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. video is really great. Like I re- highly recommend it to everyone, Like especially now. I, I think it's so much better than like not engaging engaging in any kind of uh, meeting new people, dating, but like at at some point you have to meet, right? Mm -hmm. And I think people are just, there's like a really just like big pent up energy and desire to be able to meet up. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, we're we're all just really tired. And so when the vaccination, we actually just added a feature called vaccine um, status Mm, that allows our daters to indicate if you are, you've been vaccinated or not. If you want, you don't have to um, reveal if you don't want to because we wanted to make it easy for people to have a conversation around vaccination and like COVID like safety Um, sometimes it can be awkward to kind of bring it up it can feel awkward to bring it up Um, I think with the vaccination being available like now I think there's going to be a lot of people wanting to meet up do you have any numbers around how many people have opted to give their vaccination status so we started releasing this only like about two weeks ago and now about 30 percent of people have filled it out Um, so yeah that's even people that have gotten vaccinated not everyone yeah yeah, yeah. well no, the choices are like, oh, I haven't been vaccinated oh. also, but, but plan to. So you you could Got answer it. the question even if you haven't been vaccinated. But I can also see if you're not vaccinated like pe- yet, I, I don't want to answer yet. A lot of daters kind of see this as like something that would be useful for, you know, that you can make informed choices or at least have conversation around it. So I want to get your take on this because like a lot of people in our Facebook group are using online dating for the first time. And to us, that's crazy because we live in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just right? like, oh my God, really? But a lot of people have because of the pandemic, because there's no mm-hmm. meeting in real life anymore. Do you think that these people are going to stay on the dating 
dating apps because now they're like over the hump and they're see it as like another method or do you think they're like i want to meet everyone and anyone in real life now and get off of technology <laughs> my sense is that like once you have tried dating apps and you've kind of experienced how easy it is mm-hmm. to be able to connect like even even when pre-covid like everybody's busy like there's only so many parties and bars and whatever you can go out in a you know in a, in a week right? right and so um it does provide like the convenience is is like the number one thing that like that dating apps offer and so once you kind of get a taste of that i think it's hard to go back Mm -hmm. i can see people taking a break like oh you know what like now that i can go out i'm just gonna like go out focus on going out for a little bit and then you know go back to dating apps whenever i can see them taking a break but i don't actually see people who have tried dating apps deciding never to use it again because it's so convenient and easy Mm -hmm. So now with um, vaccination status, that's uh-huh. one change that people can use. Are, are, do you have any other predictions as we come out of COVID? Any other activity changes, behavior changes, how people are using the apps? Mm-hmm. Any trends that you can predict? Yeah, one of the trends that we already started seeing, and I think it'll continue because COVID has been around for a pretty long time. It's not like it was like a one month thing, two month thing. Now it's been over a year. Um, and, and so I think it will actually make a permanent mark on the psyche of daters. One of the things that we're seeing is that, and I, I think it was, it's like 80% plus or something like that have told us that they, you know, COVID has made them think a lot more about and reflect a lot more about life in general, what they mm. really, really want, what matters for you, right? And especially, of course, when it comes to dating and the type of people that I actually want to be with, I think people have become a lot more like long-term oriented uh, versus uh, before, I, you know, I think even even for those of us who want something more uh, deeper and real, like, because everybody's on, you know, those swiping apps, like we just swipe and I think it's kind of easy to get into this routine mm-hmm. without really thinking too much about like what is what what outcome does this actually generate? And so a lot of people have started telling us, hey, I'm thinking a lot more about how I'm using dating apps. I'm thinking a lot more about what kind of partners I want to have. I'm taking a lot longer to actually choose who I want to who I want to meet up. And so I think it's actually making us uh, think more long term, like and be really more honest about what we want. That trend, I don't think is also going to change or go like go away. You know, people just reflecting more and being more thoughtful about how they want to approach dating, I think is going to stay. I mean, I think one of the things that I think I agree with you that once people kind of get a taste of it, I mean, we can see this in the culture, (laughs) like in major cities that have had dating apps forever, that once you get a taste of it, you do see like how like you basically don't have to go out every night and you can meet people that you wouldn't have met otherwise. I think the burning question that a lot of people have that maybe are newer to dating apps or maybe more skeptical of dating apps is this, is how do you as a data app founder kind of balance the needs of the user to get them off the data app to meet a long term partner versus like the needs of you as a business? I think that kept coming up from our audience. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. This is an interesting challenge, right? Because I th- believe it or not, this is actually one of the most common questions I got from mm-hmm. investors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if you're successful, and you're so good at your job, then you people are going to get off. So that's really bad for you. So you you probably should, you know, not do a too good of a job, you know, so, <laughs> right? Like, don't don't match them too well. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality, like I, I like reality is most people leave dating apps, including Coffee Meets Bagel, not because they found somebody, but because they're so freaking frustrated. Mm-hmm. They're so frustrated by, you know, like the the results not happening, the outcome. And so they leave. The people who actually find somebody and they, they, that, uh, and that's the reason why they leave when they leave. Well, first of all, while they were on the platform, they're having such a good time. They're telling everyone, <laughs> right, they're literally right, telling sure. everyone, for right? Sure. They're spending money happily because they're like, wow, this actually really works. And then when they get off, they're telling literally everyone also, they become like your biggest ambassador. Like I literally, I just this past weekend, I met up with a friend of a friend who happens to be a CMB couple. (laughs) And she wrote me such a like, such a sweet letter about how this trend, like CMB transformed her life. 
Mm. Um, like it was so heartwarming. I posted on my Instagram and I, mean, I know she's telling every one of her friends to use right. CBD. And so the more cases like that we can create, it's going to be so much better for the business. And so I think people kind of forget that. Like as a business owner, all dating app owners, like we need to, we're so eager to find a way to get people to leave because they found somebody on our platform. We see as an objectively speaking, it is something that is very beneficial to the business for the reasons I just shared Mm -hmm. versus when someone leaves because they're tired, they're just going to be talking bad about your your app, right? Right. And don't use it, right? And word of mouth, like Coffee Meets Bagel only grows by word of mouth right now. We do very little marketing spending. And so this is critical to our growth, like just having more ambassadors who, who's going to advocate for us who's, because they're having a good time. The other question I also get is like, well, you're you're helping people find love. So why charge, right? Then you're kind of making it harder for people to find love, which is true, which is true. But also like we are a business, so we do have to generate revenue. We have to <laughs> cover our costs. We have to be profitable. My kind of philosophy on that is like, you know, how do we actually, you know, we have a term like it pays to subscribe, like our revenue uh, product manager came up with that. Like, let's make our subscription package so worthwhile. They feel like it, it pays. It, it's, it's like the results are so much better mm. than when I didn't subscribe that like I am very happy to pay right right? so let's get it to that state where people are just super happy to pay because the results speak for themselves yeah i mean i remember these exact same conversations on shark tank and i was so (laughs) proud of the answers because i'm like yes that's exactly it that's how a dating app should be thinking because one i feel like as a consumer i feel like i get better product when i pay and if i don't for some reason even if the product is the same i have this perception that it's not Mm. as good so that's i totally understand the pay to play game plan. And the other end of this too is, I mean, I just look at our Facebook group, there's always questions about which app should I be using? And the people commenting are always the ones who either had a really good experience (laughs) or a really bad experience. (laughs) And the ones who had a really good experience, they are your hugest ambassador, even though some of them have said, oh, I got off this app because I found someone or I've moved on. I had such a great experience on this app and boom, 30,000 people just saw I don't know I just inflated that number but a million people just saw that comment and they're like "Ooh, I'm gonna get on this app so I really I really love that philosophy because it shows that it's not just the bottom line is actually aligned with what people are looking for right yeah it totally is I totally forgot that you had were on Shark Tank that just like (laughs) triggered my memory that was like such an epic moment I remember like seeing you you all on there just denying the money and I'm like wow these are badass women. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, what? I think the other thing that seems to come up over and over again for people in our community and our listeners is what goes into this algorithm? Anything yes. you could share? I think people are just so curious. Yes. Yeah, I, I know, right? I get this. This is a, one of the more common questions also that I get. And like area where I, I am the most vague, actually, because it is a proprietary information. And all, all, honestly speaking, like it's so complicated that I don't think I can even articulate it myself. Like, um, you know, I have to rely on my, my data scientist to actually be able to explain. But several things that I, I can tell you is we actually don't have only one algorithm. Mm. We have many. And at any given point all these algorithms are running simultaneously so that we can and it could also be like different like the ratio of the al- different algorithm that actually goes into building up your queue your inventory per se c- is different per different people because everyone has um, different preferences and some uh, characteristics are weighed more for certain people right like you may care more about I don't know somebody who's like one mile away mm. versus Julie might care more about no I don't really care about distance but I care more about like I don't know their interest like we have the same common hobby right so it's all very different and so so we have to be able to provide and kind of like decipher that somehow mm. be able to curate based on your wants and there's also the other side of like okay you also have to be liked right so we can't just show you like all this list of people that you are only going to like mm. we also have to have pretty good confidence level that you, you're going to be liked back mm. it, it actually tries to really maximize for connection rate versus mm. like rate and so that, you know just need, needless to say it's super complicated <laughs> 
So there's like a bunch of different algorithms running for different kinds of people. Like it's hard to kind of explain like, oh yeah, our, our algorithm works this way uh, be- because it, dating is so personal. And our goal eventually is to be able to individualize it, right? We're not really there yet, but like the more yeah. segmentation we can do, the better. You know what? Uh, I find this fascinating. My friend and I were both on CMB at the same time and she loved giving me her leftovers. I would call them leftovers because <laughs> yeah. she didn't want to I totally meet. remember when this happened. <laughs> do you remember this? Yeah. And I yeah. kind of took offense to it, but the people she was sending me, I was shocked that I had never seen them before on CMB. Mm, mm-hmm. Like to me, I just mm-hmm. thought we were sort of the same person. We're in the same age range. I thought we'd be served up the same people. I had never seen them. And now I realize why, because they were not my type. They were more her type. And that's why they were her leftovers. Um, but, but I do want to ask this question. And this is something that my friend, my Asian friends and I have always had discussions around because for any of my Asian friends who want to find high quality Asian singles to date and be in relationships with, CMB is the go-to app. Mm -hmm. And Mm. among this group of friends, they kind of coin it as the Asian dating app. Is this, (laughs) do you think this is because of the algorithm? It's serving up exactly what you're looking for? Or is it, do the numbers actually show that there are more Asian users? So if I look at like the makeup of our app, it's not that different from the general population. Maybe we're a little bit overrepresented in the Asian category because I think it's a function of like me being a founder, the Asian mm-hmm. founder. And then like we started with our, my friends, right. which, you know, I had a lot of Asian friends. And then like, because we grow through word of mouth, you mm. know, th- that kind of just kind of built that way. But it's not like, we've heard some people, you know, this is not the first time I actually heard this comment. I think like Coffee Meets Bay was like 90% Asian or something like that. But it, it, it's, it's <laughs> not sure true, it right? <laughs> like Asians are like minority in the US. Yeah. And I'm just talking about a, uh, the US right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's just not possible. Maybe we're slightly overrepresented, but not by, not not by much. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably a function of we'll curate, like the way the algorithm is curating. Yeah, I mean, my algorithm, it, it doesn't look any different than any other app I'm on. Just like the <laughs> the ratios are pretty even to me. Right. But I've definitely heard yeah. that from girlfriends also. So yeah. I guess the question I have, we got this from one of our listeners. They weren't, it wasn't about CMB specifically, but they made a general comment like, hey, education's really important to me, yet I never seem mm-hmm. to get anyone that's highly educated. Like, Mm. is there a way Mm. that people could kind of trade the algorithm? Like you were saying earlier, what's important to me might be different than UA. Like, is there ways to put those like preferences in? The algorithm picks it up by learning from your choices. So the best way to train the algorithm is you actually giving it as many data points as possible Mm. by making, liking, or passing decision. And even though it's not asking you like, why are you choosing this, right? It, It is trying to decipher on, you know, the machine learning is trying to decipher or so more, so more data points it has, the more pattern it's, the easier it's going to be able to decipher the pattern. Like if it only has 10 data points to work with, like it's not going to mm-hmm. be able to figure out why you're past, why mm-hmm. you passed on, on these t- 10 people, right? Like it needs to be able to figure out the pattern for that to happen. It, it needs like, you know, good amount of data. So the best thing that your friend can do is actually come in and like, like or pass and make the decision so that machine can register. Actually, that's like a perfect follow up because there was like another question like i think we've all seen when you join a new app you're shown all the time you seem to get the most matches at that stage i was wondering like is there anything and i guess you kind of answered it like the more you interact with an app does that go into like how more often you're shown so it's not yes and no so like we do consider like one of the factors that algorithm does consider is activity level and so if you're somebody who doesn't come in a lot like i mean for example like we actually even automatically deactivate you mm. right because we don't want to show yep. somebody who's like da- stale right um mm. stale bagel <laughs> <laughs> stale <laughs> bagel company. nobody wants to be that like, no one wants a stale right. bagel and then, <laughs> and then like we show you to somebody else and they like but then you're not gonna come in and you so this person is not gonna respond it's just not fair so we're gonna eventually deactivate you so your activity level does matter if you're really just not coming in we're, we're gonna even completely stop showing you mm. but i can't also say like oh if you answer every day then you more the, we're going to show you to more and more and more people it, 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 to a certain extent but it's not exactly works that way like straight straightforward at, in a straightforward level so I, I think overall just for the algorithm to know you better and to a certain extent the activity level will influence how often you get shown for the reason that I just shared that makes sense what do you think is a better approach let's say you go for weeks 
without being too thrilled by who you're being served up. Do you think it's better to change your preferences so that it it shakes up the algorithm? Or is it better to try to figure out why Coffee Meets Bagel is giving you these people (laughs) and maybe diving deeper into (laughs) into these people that are your current choices? I would recommend the first, like do stuff that's within your control. Like it's it's going to be really hard to guess what the machine's doing, right? There are a couple of things that are just true. Like if if you, I don't know, your your preference is so narrow that, I mean, even if Coffee Meets Bill algorithm is like freaking amazing, if there's only 10 people we can curate from, you're just going to see those 10 people, right? right? right. <laughs> like there, there's, right. There, the algorithm is just only powerful if there's enough people that we can actually curate like and filter or two mm. down to right if you're like have all this bunch of criteria like I, no i don't want to meet somebody who's like i don't know unless like a block away or something like that that, that it's just going to be not as powerful uh like we talked about it in the at the save the data episode like mm-hmm. must have like really be clear on must haves and um nice to have right mm-hmm. like i think for that reason that's really important and then and then like I would do a lot of different other things so you, you know you can do it one one at a time to see what works you can experiment with the first photo to see if that actually kind of changes something you can experiment with like what you write like, you know to see like order of things and things like that let's take a short break from this riveting conversation all about dating apps and profiles uh, for a quick message Let's face it, it's a weird time to be dating or developing relationships. Have you recently decided that you want to make some changes to your love life? Maybe you've recently re-entered the dating scene. Maybe you've gone on one too many dates that went nowhere. Or maybe you're ready to take your current relationship to the next level. That is exactly why we created The Sounding Board, a true extension of our podcast that delivers a personalized experience, which includes one-on-one coffee dates with us, a monthly dateable live after show, exclusive audio content, and much more. Allow Julie and I become your dating Sherpas to provide real-time guidance and wisdom in a more intimate way so we can navigate dating and relationships together. Join the sounding board today by going to datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Again, that's datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Okay, let's get back into this convo. I'm just curious because you said that, like, how long do you have to be inactive to get booted? Or like, what is kind of the time (laughs) frame of that? (laughs) <laughs> when do you become a stale I, bagel? I want to know. <laughs> I think we actually, I mean, it's actually, we, we've done it pretty narrowly. So I think it's like 14 days or 20 oh, days or something wow. like that. Yeah. And we do notify you. It's not like we, we don't tell you. Mm-hmm. We we also give you uh, communication. We try to communicate through emails or, or even push messages to like, hey, like we're not seeing that you're actually coming to check. We're going to de- deactivate you just because, you know, we want to make sure that our community communities active like we're showing active people i mean that's great because people always complain that like half the problem on like the swipe apps is that these people might not be ever active so i think (laughs) that's really great Mm -hmm. to hear that you are proactively trying to get ahead of that and then what about this like flip-flop behavior of people installing and uninstalling we hear this all the time taking a dating sabbatical i've uninstalled all my apps (laughs) and two hours later they're back on (laughs) do you have any data on these i I call them flip-floppers but you know this kind of activity i don't have a specific stats i can share i mean it's a very common thing and i think it's a healthy thing right like if you are not feeling jazzed you know i I remember i know like one of the you know dating tips that you give is like attitude matters a lot right like attitude Mm -hmm. matters a lot when you show up on the first date attitude matters a lot when you're actually approaching using dating apps too right so a lot of matches that you would have said yes to if you were in a you know good positive mindset everyone looks bad right? right if we're in a you know not so great uh mindset so then you would just like pass on people and like coffee meets bagel like when once you say no it's not like we are going to go back and like show this person again right then you you may may have wasted this person who could have been a really good fit because you were just kind of not in that not in that mood mm-hmm. you were just kind of in the like i'm just going to swipe left on everyone kind of mood and so i think taking a break is really good if you're um feeling tired and not really like 100 percent. i mean you were talking about it earlier that it's actually more detrimental for you as a business to have these kind of haters of the app out there. Disgruntled. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, we 
we say this all the time and fully champion that people tend to blame apps as like the scapegoat when mm-hmm. a lot of it really has to do <laughs> with your own self. I guess it, from your perspective, like what's some advice that you could give to people to kind of have a better user experience and change that mindset when using an app? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for saying that. We do get blamed a lot. (laughs) It's like my biggest (laughs) pet peeve. I I hate it so much. (laughs) (laughs) Our customer experience team, who has to like interact with a lot of customers, there are a lot of angry, there's a lot of people who are grateful, but we also get a lot of angry. Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) um, (laughs) Angry emails. And, uh, you know, I always tell my team, like, let's think of it as a good thing because that means they're really emotionally vested into mm-hmm. our product mm. and into dating and so of course with the, with a lot of expectation and a lot of optimism w- when you have that and it doesn't materialize you're really disappointed right and so I actually heard somebody saying that like cynical people are the most optimistic because <laughs> that, that that means they just had a huge like high expectation and they're just mm. disappointed right it's um, true. I guess that's a very so, optimistic way of yeah. looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I, I'm great. I mean, I, I think it's much better than like very, you know, I don't really care about coffee meets bagel, right? Like that, that attitude, right? At least they're engaging with us with a lot of um, emotion. So that's a, it's a good thing. But some of the things that I, I think that I would share is like one, like do take a break, like make sure that when you're using it, you're using it for real. Like some of my friends, I, I see the way they're using it, like they're very tired. They get, but they still feel like they, they, they feel obligated to get on. They're, they're using it. And then because they're very tired, like they don't, when they connect, they don't, they don't send messages. They don't respond right mm-hmm. away. They mm-hmm. don't like, they don't take action and the so momentum dies. And the connect, again, like this connection that could have gone somewhere just goes nowhere. And with dating apps, you have to remember that everybody, even on coffee, platform like Coffee Meets Bagel, where it's like things are curated, like there's a lot of people to go through, right? And there's, you know, some yeah. people have a lot of connections to go through. And if you, th- this signaling impact is really big. Like some, some people, like my friends completely complain like how how come people don't respond like they're not chatting and i see the way they engage with uh the app and it's like when they connect they don't say anything and then three days like or when they receive message the the three days go by and when when you kind of use dating apps that way like the other person's gonna immediately just conclude that you're not interested like you're not you don't know this person you're kind of texting um you you're you know that you're like both of you are using dating apps and can connect with other people and so a lot of us are looking for signals from the other person that they're really they're, they're really serious about me like that they're re- they're really interested in me if they don't actually sense that, they're just going to move on. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you're kind of doing it out of out of obligation and not fully in and engaging in an app such that like, you know, 48 hours go by and then you're just uh, responding, then nothing's ever going to happen. Right. That I, I would emphasize. What about for the people that are putting in the effort? Like we hear a lot of people that are frustrated by the haze and no response after or mm-hmm. the <laughs> flakes like that start off messaging and then just disappear. Like things that actually are human behavior but get the app gets blamed for what's your take on Mm. that any ways to kind of like minimize that bad experience yeah so if you're engaging and you're still having bad experience and you know i i think that a lot of times you could be the app right like maybe we're not surfacing the right person or that we i think definitely we have to be do a better job connecting you with people who are when it comes to chat like really really engaged we can only control like what we can control so what i would kind of recommend is kind of take a look at how you're chatting like i was actually talking to kimmy who is the flirting expert that you guys oh, have yeah, right right <laughs> yeah 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 i mean she was so awesome and we talked about how a lot of times like the people how she observes her clients engage is like a it's like a ping pong match right like you you say hey they say hey how was your weekend oh it was good like like so then it's just kind of there's no there's no fun or playfulness in it which right. which is the the point of dating right that's what everyone is like even though we may not be articulating it like that's what that's that's that the energy that we're looking for is the playful like you know we're kind of like playing off of each other kind of energy but like if we're just kind of like answering a q a kind of thing then we're not going to get there and so like i would kind of take a look at like okay so why isn't what i'm saying elic- eliciting response right is is am i kind of engaging in an interview style question mm-hmm. like uh 
response? Am I actually like being playful enough? Like meeting on dating apps, which means, you know, people are interacting with different folks. And so how can I actually uh, send some, a message in a way that stands out and, and like make it want, like the other person to want to respond. Mm-hmm. People can listen to our whole episode that we did with you that really goes into depth. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and then Dawoon, do you have any tips for people who can do, make changes now, right now that can improve their match rate or improve the algorithm? For example, are there certain photos that do well, opening lines or something they should include in their profile? Yes. So f- Photo matters a lot. These are like basic, basic online dating tips. Mm-hmm. Photo matters a lot, your, especially your first photos. Like I find that um, a lot of us, you know, spend a lot of time like carefully picking the photos. But like if the first photo isn't actually really good one, then a lot of people don't even swipe, like don't even like actually go through the second, third photo. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't even matter mm-hmm. what your second, third photo photos are. So first photo, make sure that your uh, faces are visible you're smiling. And, and like the best thing is to actually ask the uh, person, whoever it is, like if you're a woman looking for men, then ask your guy friends. If you're men looking for, you know, woman, ask your girl, like female friends, men looking for men, like whatever your, the type of, the, the uh, sexual preferences are, like you just ask that people because the photos that we think where we look good oftentimes isn't actually the best like most attractive looking photo for the other um category uh so so i would actually get people's input i see like for example also like especially my girlfriends because like we we have a lot of group photos and we think we look actually really good in there so we put a group photo in uh, you know, as a first photo that you know i highly advise against that because they, like sometimes people are just like so busy that they don't even want to bother like figuring trying to figure out who totally which one you are right so take a look at your first photo to make sure that you know it's really good your profile also like surprisingly matters a lot especially for women like you know i think the dating experience for women um it's very different than guys right a lot of women have this like baggage experience of like guys not being serious and so like the the things that people write on profile, they take it as a signal of how serious that you are. And so um, profile is very important. You don't have to write an essay, right? But uh, make sure that it's filled out at least like a few sentences and make sure it's a good conversation starter, right? You almost think of mm-hmm. like, think of your profile as a conversation starter. Like, is there something that is like personal enough for the other person to be able to grab onto it and start conversations around? And so that's a good test for uh, how interesting your profile is. If it's something that like your friend and sister and brother could have written, then it's not personal enough. Right. Preferences is is a big one. Like make sure that you, again, like the wider the preference, of course, if it's a, something that's important to you, you have to put it in. The better the algorithm can do a good job like curating because there's a, there's a larger pool to work with. Have you, either of you heard of the site called photofeeler.com? No, what's that? So I actually used it. I was trying to think, like remember what it was called while you were talking. <laughs> so it's basically a site that you could submit your photos, you could pick your demographic of like who you're interested in and you get ratings on your photos. So it oh was, it's all anonymous people, but like it was, I did it and it was like, you, I mean, you have to pay for it, but I could quickly see like which photos were resonating with people and which ones weren't so it's like a very good way to like be able to prioritize your photos or lose some completely from rotation oh Oh, it's like a more useful hot or not yeah it's like a (laughs) pan you're basically getting like a panel that you're paying for like you get credits based off your panel panel i will note that it's a little addicting at first i'm like okay i'm spending ten dollars max i probably spent like thirty (laughs) dollars i thought it was really useful i don't know it helped me yeah yeah you know julie that's so interesting you mentioned that because we actually used to have i forgot what we called it a feature where you could you could submit photo for the cmv community to vote on Mm. oh um but yeah for that because we really wanted to make help people pick the right photo because photo is so important and i think what we didn't do well is like actually limiting it to the segment of people who you're looking for that's Mm -hmm. that's important it was kind of like Mm -hmm. open for everyone to Mm. provide feedback yeah but that that's a really good tool i mean we could talk to you like all day but i guess like the last kind of question before we go into (laughs) some of our takeaways is for anyone that either you or because i know you've been in relationships 
relationships from dating apps included coffee meets bagel uh but any of your like any of your clients or anyone that uses the apps or friends like is there any advice that you would give of someone that's kind of come out the other side and had a serious successful relationship off a dating app yes and you know this is the thing that made the most difference for me so that's why i'm sharing it and i don't think it's applies to dating apps per se um it just applies to people who are dating in general i think investing in our communication skill being able to actually articulate whether you are chatting on cmb dating app or texting or meeting in person what i realized is again the connections that could have gone somewhere like really beautiful connections that could have happened don't happen because we don't articulate what we are feeling we don't ask the right question we're not curious enough to engage and ask people the questions that we need to ask in order to really understand the other person we just make conclusions about them like they're not interested or they're this they're that Mm -hmm. and then kind of move on if you learn to actually approach people with curiosity versus just making conclusion on your own um in the especially in the early stage where we don't really know each other if you also learn to take the lean into you know uncomfortable situation and also be able to share how you're feeling i think that actually has made the most amount of difference in terms of my dating life and be being able to take the connections that I make on dating apps to the next level whether or not we end up in a long-term relationship my advice is like invest in that that communication skill i think that can make a huge difference to your dating life whether you're using dating apps or not like that that's wonderful i think w- we learned quite a bit from this conversation <laughs> it's so great to get an insider's view into looking at dating apps cuz we here here's my takeaway i think we take dating apps for granted think about mm-hmm. it people there's a whole business built around finding you love this is all they care about their whole team is working night and day to find you good matches. So why don't we take the same amount of energy into what we put into the apps, how we look at people, how we use the apps? So my takeaway is I think we can all be a little bit more mindful when we interact with dating apps. For example, I always like to say, treat it like an event. When CMB serves you up the curated people for you, if you can cast onto your TV, do it. Set an alarm (laughs) at 8 p.m. and be like, my matches are curated for me now. I'm going to project it onto my TV and make an event out of it. Because the people working behind the app want you to have that climatic moment, being like, ooh, (laughs) this could be someone or this could be a really great match. So I think just being more mindful and putting in the effort of how you interact is a, a, it will make a, make it a much more positive experience. Personally, for me, something that's worked in the past is putting my phone in grayscale Mm -hmm. and swiping or not swiping or looking at photos and profiles that way. So it kind of puts everyone at an even playing field and it gives you a different experience of how you absorb the uh, the information and what you notice. Sometimes with colors, you get distracted by the background or the color of their shirt. But if it's all in grayscale, you don't notice these, these distractions. And my very last takeaway is, I think it's it goes back to this idea of using dating apps as a tool to not just to find love, because sometimes that may not be our end goal. It may not just be about being in a relationship, but to find, to use dating apps as a tool to relate better to other people and to hone in on our communication skills Mm -hmm. and to make the apps work for us instead of us blaming the apps that when we're not feeding the apps enough information. If we're talking about open communication, you got to also openly communicate with the apps by constantly changing your filters, your preferences, etc. Because nobody can read your mind. (laughs) There are no predictions being made here. And everyone, again, is working as hard as they can to find you the right matches. Yeah, I I love. That. I mean, my biggest takeaway is I've I've always been very pro dating apps, so this isn't like a revelation from this. But I think what is a revelation is how much you're actually putting so much effort into finding people these matches and like really trying to kind of be their ally and love. And I love this whole part about you know 
it's actually a success when we find success for people. I think so many people think that like dating apps are the devil because it's a business trying to get (laughs) capitalism (laughs) and all this stuff. And I think like this really shows that that is not the case. And I actually just think it's all in your mindset. I know that's like our takeaway for everything, but it really is with dating apps because like UA said, if you look at it as a tool, that's like as another way to meet people. Like I know I've had the best success with dating apps when it's like one of many ways a meeting and that I'm also able mm-hmm. to be like, oh, I would never have met you if it wasn't for this dating app. Like, what a gift. And it's like, how do you frame this opposed to like thinking like, oh, another day I have to go swipe through a zillion matches. <laughs> like, obviously, that's not going to be fun for you. you know? yeah. So I think like, and I think a lot of times people are trying to find that silver bullet of like, what photo do I put up? And obviously, there's tips that you mentioned of how not to like totally mess that up. But there is no like one thing that you do. It's it's really how do you perceive this app and helping you? That's ultimately at the mm-hmm. end of the day going to be the experience you have is how do you view it? Do you enjoy doing it? Like, are you like excited to be there? Are you excited to start conversations, meet these people? Or is it a chore for you? Because if it is a chore, then no app is going to ever make you happy and solve the problems because <laughs> it goes deeper than yeah. that. It's way deeper. <laughs> it's therapy. Therapy is the answer. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think the last question that I have for you that I wish we even asked at the beginning, why the name's Coffee Meets Bagel? I don't even know if I know the backstory. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So when we first started, we were targeting young professionals, like, you know, we're busy at work and want to have the most effective app, like, because it's a curation-based app. The, The way Coffee Meets Bagel works is every day at noon, we give you a batch of people, right, which we call bagels. You know, so we wanted to kind of cultivate this habit of like waiting for noon as something that you're really looking forward to that and then you kind of bam like you open it i guess kind of like an event like you had, you had just mentioned and so we were like okay what's one thing that everyone looks forward to like if you're a young professional at work coffee break <laughs> what goes well with coffee we chose bagel as an homage to new york city because that's mm, where we started so very new york yes <laughs> at first i thought it was a jewish dating site because i am jewish <laughs> and i was like <laughs> You know, we get that a lot too. And actually, our early user base, we had a lot of Jewish uh, daters as well. I think because people thought it was a Jewish dating app. I actually, <laughs> that was great. actually good for this us. This is kind of like triggering this memory. I remember I was on like this really bad Tinder date and I was at this bar and I was trying to get out and I was like waiting for him in the bathroom and some like random girl was like, you should try coffee meets bagel. And that's how I found <laughs> out about it. And I was like, wait, what is and- this? <laughs> and it was down. Awesome. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, you should try this app. That I'm it was that with. local that was edition me. in San Francisco. I don't know if you happen to be there. <laughs> and the, here, here is a very serious question: In the near future, when people have sworn off caffeine and gluten, have you thought about <laughs> what <laughs> alternative names you would use? Would be like kombucha and avocado. I, I don't know. <laughs> What's That'd be another? funny if like every city had a different name based on like <laughs> We actually seriously thought about that. Like especially in cultures where bagels are not available. Coffee is pretty universal, mm-hmm. but a bagel not should we change name or not? But we decided to stick with it because um I think bagels are getting popular and coffee, you know, even if you don't drink coffee, like there's it's this, a thing. like yeah, you know, like it smells so nice, it's cozy. Yep. Yeah. There's something comforting yeah. about a bagel, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love bagels <laughs> and cream cheese. <laughs> Her last takeaway is yeah. we're really into coffee I'm and like, bagels. I think I want a bagel right now is my takeaway. I think I want a bagel yeah. and a coffee. Just say. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jawoon, for your time. This was so informative and helpful. And I hope for a lot of listeners, eye-opening just to mm-hmm. unveil what goes behind the scenes at CMB and, and at dating apps. And uh, you also have your own podcast called Save the Date. How can people access that podcast? Podcast. Yeah, so you can you can listen to Save the Date by, uh, you know, using any tools that you use for typical like uh, on podcasts. So spot, it's available on Spotify, um, Apple podcast. Um, also, we post clips on our like Instagram channels um, so that you can get a kind of clip like a preview of it. If you're interested, if you want to get a like a little 
short version before you dive into the full podcast, full episode. Rumor has it that uh, the dateable girls were also on on your podcast. Right. Just, just yeah. a rumor, though. <laughs> and we dive really deep into you know like how to bring those convos from the screen to IRL. So yes. if you're yes. looking for that additional, that's kind of like the next thing to listen to after you finish this episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited for that episode. It was such an informative one. And for all all of our listeners, you know, to, for us to get these exclusive conversations like the one we're having right now, those Apple podcast reviews really help us. So if you can give us five stars and a nice little sentence or two, again, it just really helps us curate a really wonderful guest list of people who we can interview. So thank you again, Dawoon, for your time. I know that it's rough out there in Hawaii. So please stay (laughs) sane as you (laughs) go to the beach and get your tan on. (laughs) Thanks for having me. That was super fun. And then we'll wrap this up. Stay Stay dateable. dateable. (laughs) The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. At Capella University, education is as smart as the world around us. With the FlexPath format, you can take classes at your own pace, set your own deadlines, and even leverage your previous experience to move faster. Now that's smart. Learn more at capella.edu. Introducing Force Factor Fundamentals. Exclusively at the Vitamin Shop, these men's health essentials have clinically studied ingredients like biopurine for enhanced absorption. Yohimbine, pine bark, and L-arginine can help you strengthen blood flow and heighten passion with doses that may bring you the results you crave. Now you can save 20% on Force Factor, including the fundamentals at the Vitamin Shop. Get these men's health game changers in your life at any The Vitamin Shop store or vitaminshop.com.